A seven and a quarter inch gauge Sweet William steam locomotive, part 55. Bolting the saddle tank to the cab to obtain the front mounting positions. Drilling the holes in the tank and fitting the mounting reinforcement blocks. At the moment, with the cab fitted without the saddle tank, the engine looks like a bit of an Emmett locomotive. Roland Emmett made really artistic models, and the small locomotives that he made were not dissimilar to how this one currently looks. Once I fit the saddle tank as shown here, the engine takes on an entirely different appearance. In this episode, I have to fit the tank, bolt it to the cab, to mark out the positions on the front for the mountings, but there is a problem. In previous episodes, when you've seen the saddle tank sat on top of the boiler, there has been a piece of wood supporting the saddle tank. But now I've removed the piece of wood, the weight of the saddle tank is pressing down on the cab, which in turn is pressing down on the footplate, which is made of quite thin metal. When I lift the cab, you can see how everything starts to look better. I need to fit reinforcement to where the cab fastens to the footplate. I bought two pieces of half inch by quarter inch bright mild steel. I was going to use this to make two more valve rods, but I like the rounded edges of the one that's on there. When I held the half inch by quarter inch bright mild steel parts against the valve rod, it didn't look good. So for the moment, I'm using this material that I bought as a reinforcement for the cab. It's going to run all the way across the front and down each side. I will mark the holes on the piece of bright mild steel from the foot plate, and when everything's bolted together, the whole assembly should be more rigid. To check that this works, I'm using a set square, which shows that the tank is at 90 degrees to the cab, exactly where I want it to be. I think that my proposed reinforcement should be sufficient. If it isn't, I can beef it up a bit. I check the angle of the cab to the tank at both sides, and as you can clearly see in this image, it's fine. When I pull the camera back so you can see the locomotive sat on the bench, it's noticeably OK now. It really did look entirely wrong before I put the packing under the cab. And here I have a catch-22 situation. I cannot drop the front of the tank because the check valves are in the way. You can see how close the check valves are to the bottom of the tank in this clip. And either way, without the reinforcement, the weight of the tank would still press the cab down with considerable force when it's full of water, especially when the locomotive is on the rails going at a good speed around a bumpy track. For this part of the job, I need to fasten the tank to the cab just like it's going to be when the locomotive is finished. The tank is held to the cab using six 2BA bolts with brass nuts on the outside. Why brass? Well, it's to avoid rust. This clip shows the right-hand side of the tank sat on the front mounting. All I need to do is draw around the mounting with a felt-tip pen, which gives me the position where the tank is going to sit on the mounting and this will show me exactly where to fit the reinforcement blocks inside the tank. At this stage, I decided to do a bit of measuring, to check that the mountings were in the same place at both sides. After doing this, I unbolted the tank from the cab and removed it from the locomotive, and here it is sat on its end on the bench. I'm double-checking the accuracy of the marks that I made with it on the locomotive. And the good news is, the marks are in the right place, nice and square to the inside edge of the tank. At this stage, I'm going to call a halt to the proceedings to explain something. I've actually done this job the wrong way round, drilled them and tapped the holes 4BA, but watching the video playback, it occurs to me that this is not the easiest way to do the job. What I should have done is mark the positions underneath the tank, drilled four mounting holes, and then held the piece of brass on the inside and used a felt tip pen through the marking holes. But no, I've done it the hard way. I've marked the blocks left and right with arrows on them, so I know which way round they fit in the tank. The arrows point into the centre. Originally, I used some marking out blue because the original plan was just to poke a scriber through the holes in the blocks. 
although in the end I abandoned this, besides I put the marking out blue in the wrong place anyway. Using a powerful spring clamp, I'm holding the block in the right position. And instead of using a scriber, I'm using my Proxon motor tool, fitted with a 2.6mm drill bit, so it doesn't mark the threads. Tapping size for 4BA is 3.1mm or 1 8 of an inch. Reusing the tapping size drill bit is not a good idea because it would damage the threads. Next, using my Proxon motor tool, I drilled some holes 1 8 of an inch all the way through the tank. Why 1 8 of an inch? Well, that's the biggest drill bit that will fit in the chuck of the Proxon motor tool. Once I drilled the four holes, I cleaned up the area, first of all with a piece of cloth and some cellulose thinners, followed by some Scotch Brite. Now using my much larger DeWalt drill, I'm enlarging the holes. Unfortunately though, the clearance drill size is not exactly sharp. Non-ferrous metals like brass definitely need sharp drills. After a while, I really wasn't making much headway, but luckily I have one of these. It's called a Drill Doctor 750X. This is a very useful thing to have. You fit the drill in the special chuck, clamp it in place with the spring clamps that hold the drill in the right position, then you remove the chuck, and then you just fit it into the other hole and rotate it, and the drill is perfectly sharpened. Don't take my word for it, look at the difference. The speed of cut of the drill now took me by surprise. And in no time at all, one side of the tank was drilled underneath. The slight marking around the holes is where the Proxon's drill bit wandered about a bit. But the marks are so slight, when I deburr the holes using emery cloth, the marks will disappear. At this stage I wanted to check the alignment because I don't think that the bracket is 100% perfect. From the edge at this side to the hole centres is 3 quarters of an inch. These are the four holes at the other side and there is actually an eighth of an inch difference between the centres. This really is of no consequence, it's only a brass reinforcement block after all. After deburring the holes on both sides, it's time to countersink them on the outer side. And in no time at all, the countersinks were complete. It was at this stage that I realised that I did not have any 4BA countersunk bolts. I phoned Blackgate's Engineering yesterday afternoon and ordered some. And guess what? About ten minutes ago, there was a knock on the door and it was the postman with the parts I'd ordered. So later today, amongst other things that will be in the next video, I'll be able to fit the blocks in position. Thanks to video technology, here I'm countersinking the other side at twice normal speed. Is everything going to line up or do I have a problem? Well, no, the good news is everything seems to line up quite well. With the only countersunk 4BA bolt that I had, I loosely fitted the first block in position. That's it from me today. To all my viewers, stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.